Hello everyone, this is Sablino Dawis, your instructor. Now we are going to uh, consider a new topic which is about economic operation of power system or sometimes this is called the economic uh, dispatch of generating units. Now uh, we have to consider the general principles. Okay, number one, at any given time the generating units must be able to meet the total low demand okay, plus the system losses. Second, to anticipate growth in low demand, the installed cap generating capacity of the plants must be larger than the projected demand in order to have sufficient uh, reserve. Number three, although the primary objective of operating a power system is to have reliability of power supply, that is to avoid power interruption or shortage in power supply, the existing generating units online must be operated at minimum cost as much as possible. This means that less costly plants like hydro must be dispatched first and the most costly plant like diesel plants as last. Okay, now uh, the dispatch of individual generating units in a plant. Now in a certain type of plant, example diesel power plant, okay, the generating units may be identical in capacity. You know, they have the same capacity ratings, for example, uh, 50 megawatts each no, for its unit okay but they may differ in performance or efficiency so less efficient units are costly than the efficient ones so by least cost operating a principle okay the efficient ones must operate first so let uh, f be equal to the input okay to the unit representing okay the cost of operation which is in pesos okay per hour and we let P as the output of the unit in kilowatt or megawatts. Now, the criterion for distribution of load between any two units is based upon whether increasing the load of one unit as the load is decreased on the other unit by the same amount results in an increase or decrease in total cost. This is what we call as the incremental cost expressed as Okay, DFN, okay, DPN uh, for unit N. So, uh, the uh, fuel cost uh, in operating, for example, a diesel power plant, okay, is shown okay, by this okay, curve, you know, where uh, we have at the uh, horizontal, we have the power output in megawatts, and at the uh, vertical, we have the power input okay in liters per hour okay this is in liters per hour consumption of the uh, uh, consumption of the fuel you know, of uh, the plant so well uh, the cost of course will be uh, proportional to this because uh, we have the cost in uh, uh, per liter now uh, the incremental cost is assumed by this uh, curve you know, with this uh, horizontal uh, as power uh, output in megawatts and the incremental uh, fuel cost in pesos okay, per megawatt hour. Now, uh, the curve actually is not linear, but uh, it's like uh, parabolic, you know, meaning at higher capacity of uh, or higher output of our okay, plant, okay, the incremental cost okay, is uh, becoming uh, bigger okay uh, sometimes okay the incremental cost is just uh, represented by a straight line or for a simply uh, for simplicity as we will see okay later for multi units the criterion for economical uh, division of load between units within a plant is that all units must operate at the same incremental fuel cost thus for a plant with k number of units, okay, the total input to the plant is, okay, Ft, or the total uh, uh, cost would be equal to F1, okay, the cost of operating uh, unit 1, plus F2, plus F3, plus Fk, or this is just a, the summation of uh, Fn, okay, from n equal to 1 to k. So, this is our equation 1. So, and the total uh, output of the plant is, of course, uh, represented by uh, PT, would just be equal to the output of unit 1 plus the output of unit 2, which is P2, 
Okay, the, unit, the output of unit 3, which is P3, until uh, the last, no, which is uh, the uh, output of uh, uh, unit N. Okay, so uh, this is just equal to the summation of okay, Pn for uh, N equal to 1, okay, to K. So, to uh, minimize, okay, the total cost of Ft, okay, for a given uh, Pt, okay, we set, okay, the uh, differential of Ft equal to 0. So, uh, computing our uh, Dft, okay, would be equal to the partial derivative of Ft with respect to P1 times Dp1. Now, if... Uh, we are looking for the uh, differential uh, cost of uh, operating unit 1. Then uh, plus, okay, the partial of Ft with respect to, okay, P2, okay, times uh, dp2. Until uh, the last, which is the partial of uh, Ft with respect to uh, k, now dpk equal to 0. So this is our equation 3. Now, the restriction that uh, if t remain uh, constant requires that uh, dpt must be equal to zero. Now, so, we consider at a certain uh, uh, time wherein okay, the total load is okay, constant. So, dpt is equal to zero. So, our uh, dpt will just be equal to uh, dp1 plus dp2 plus dp3 okay, plus okay, the last, which is dpk equal to okay, zero. Now, um, yeah, multiplying equation 4, okay, by lambda, a certain uh, factor, and subtracting, okay, the resulting equation, okay, from equation 3, okay, yields, okay, so we multiply this equation by lambda, every term here by lambda, and uh, we subtract it from, okay, equation 3. So, what we have is that, okay, this one, Okay, partial of Ft with respect to P1 times dp1 minus okay, dp1 times lambda, which is this. And we factor out uh, dp1, so we just uh, partial of Ft with respect to P1 minus lambda okay, times dp1. Now, similarly for the other terms, okay, we have partial of Ft with respect to P2, okay, dp2 minus okay, dp2 multiplied by alpha, so factoring out dp2, we have partial of ft with respect to p2 minus lambda okay times dp2 and so on okay until uh, the last so this is our uh, equation five now so you see here that uh, we have terms okay containing okay partial derivative of ft okay with respect to the uh, 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 unit output no of like it's a unit so for this instance you have uh, partial or empty with respect to a p1 okay times dp1 and then and so on so we have here addition you know, plus plus okay so we have equation five you no know, and notice that at the right we have uh, okay zero so equation five okay, can be satisfied only if every term at the left Okay, it should be equal to zero. Okay, so okay, if this is zero and this is zero, then plus zero until the last, then uh, it is equal to zero at the right. So the equation is okay satisfied. So this means that partial of if t with respect to p1 minus lambda, if we equate this to zero, no. So if a dp1 is not equal to zero, then uh, this factor must be equal to zero. So, partial of Ft with respect to P1 minus lambda is equal to 0. And then partial of Ft with respect to P2 minus lambda also is equal to 0. Okay, until, okay, the last, okay, unit. Now, the partial of F with respect to P, okay, becomes uh, the uh, simple derivative of DF with respect to P. Now, since only one unit, okay, is varied in its case. So, okay, so... When we take the partial of f with respect to p1, okay, now only the 
the cost of uh, unit 1 is okay varied while the rest are kept okay constant so therefore our partial derivative can just be uh, reduced to the uh, simple derivative okay df okay dt so that's uh, okay we write in each case we have okay the derivative of f1 okay with respect to uh, dt1 is just equal to okay lambda now and uh, derivative of uh, f2 with respect to uh, p2 is equal to lambda and so on okay so this is our uh, equation 6 so equation 6 okay says that the incremental cost of the units must be the same or equal to lambda okay which is called the lagrangian okay multiplier okay so we call the lambda here as the lagrangian multiplier uh, multiplier so this means that for each unit okay the uh, there are derivative of their cost with respect to uh, their output okay must be okay the same okay so let us uh, take uh, for example now the incremental fuel cost in a pieces per megawatt hour okay for a plant consisting of two units are given by this no uh, incremental cost okay so this is df1 okay dp1 is equal to 0 0.0080 okay p1 okay plus 8.6 and this is okay our okay lambda one no so uh, the increment the uh, incremental equation in the incremental cost equation is uh, considered okay linear okay so although in our graph before uh, we see that okay the incremental cost is somewhat parabolic but uh, for uh, simplicity we can approximate okay the incremental cost of uh, each unit as linear okay for our convenience okay so this is our equation for okay lambda one and uh, for our lambda two which is the derivative of f2 with respect to what uh, t2 is 0 0.0096 okay p2 plus 6.4 now assume that both units are operating at all times okay that total load varies from 250 to 1250 megawatts okay from 250 to 1250 watts uh, the total okay load and that the maximum and the minimum load of each units okay are to be 6 to 5 no maximum megawatts and the minimum is 100 megawatts okay so find incremental fuel cost and allocation of load between units okay for the minimum cost of various okay total loads okay so uh, take note that our load okay varies from 250 to 1250 megawatts and then we have the uh, restrictions okay that uh, each unit can operate only up to a maximum of 6 to 5 megawatts you know, so this may be the rated capacity and okay they have to operate with minimum load of 100 megawatts so meaning they cannot operate at 10 megawatts 20 megawatts but at 100 megawatts now this is uh, usually true because at very light load you know, of our generating units okay the uh, vibration okay is so strong no? because uh, the load is light and uh, uh, the uh, vibrations of the uh, units okay okay is very uh, severe so okay the uh, vibration will be only okay uh, acceptable okay when uh, we the unit is loaded up you no know, with the 100 megawatts okay so for our uh, solution for economic operation according to equation six okay that uh, the incremental cost of unit one must be equal to the incremental cost of unit two so equating uh, the uh, equations so we have 0 0.008 p1 plus 8.0 equals 0 0.096 p2 plus 6.4 now we can solve for p2 in terms of p1 so solving for p2 okay we have this now we transfer 6.4 to the left and then uh, we divide 
okay, the results, okay, by the coefficient of P2. So, our P2, therefore, is equal to 0.833 P1 plus 166.67. And we call this as our equation 7. Okay, so uh, P2 uh, is in terms of, okay, P1. Now, however, okay, the... Uh, Output of unit 1 plus the output of unit 2 should equal to the total load, no, the uh, carry. So, therefore, we have here uh, P1 and then uh, for P2, we substitute okay, this expression okay, into this uh, equation. So, we have 0 0.833 P1 plus okay, 1.667 okay, equal to okay, the total load PT. So, combining this, so we have 1.833 P1 plus Okay, 166.67 equal to the total load, okay, P2. So, this is our equation 8. Now, uh, okay, remember uh, these two equations because we will be using this in the succeeding uh, calculations. Okay, now we consider, okay, the total uh, load of 250 megawatts, not the minimum. So, from equation 8, okay, we see that uh, we have 1.33 P1 plus 166.7 equal to PT. Okay, so therefore, we solve P1 as 45.46 megawatts. And uh, from equation uh, 7, okay, P2 in terms of P1, so we have 0.833 times okay, P1, which is 45.46 plus 166.7, so it's equal to 204.54 megawatts. So, these are the values of P1 and P2 for the most economical operation, okay? Uh, because uh, these are re results from equating lambda 1 equal to lambda 2. However, the minimum load of 100 megawatts for unit 1 is violated. So, because uh, P1 from the calculation carries only 45.46 megawatts, while uh, the restriction is that unit 1 or each unit should not be loaded below 100 megawatts. Now, the limitations of the units, okay, should be given priority over other conditions, okay, such as economic considerations. So, uh, the uh, limitations of the units should be given a priority. Otherwise, okay, when uh, we allow, okay, the uh, unit to operate at this value, okay, we might... Uh, encounter a okay, severe okay vibrations of okay the plant okay so therefore uh, the uh, economic uh, consideration is uh, set aside okay when uh, the uh, limits are violated so therefore p1 should be adjusted to 100 megawatts and then uh, p2 also will follow okay thus Okay, we set okay, the load of P1 to 100 megawatts and then our P2 is simply equal to PT minus P1. Okay, so equation 7 uh, will not uh, prevail. Uh, okay, but uh, by simple uh, uh, formula, no? That, uh, okay, P1 plus P2 is equal to PT. So from this formula, okay, we can solve for the uh, load of uh, P2, which is, okay, 250 for the total load, okay, minus 100. So, P2, therefore, should carry 150 megawatts. Okay, so, uh, for uh, this case, okay, unit 1 is now safe because uh, it's now uh, loaded with its uh, minimum uh, load of 100 megawatts, and then uh, P2 carries a load of 150 megawatts, which is above its minimum also. Okay, so it's okay. And uh, it is below its maximum of 6 to 5. So this value of P2 is uh, okay no, for P2 to operate. So with these values of P1 and P2, we compute their incremental cost okay, from the formula. So lambda 1 is equal to 0 0.008 times 100 okay, plus 8. So this is equal to 8.8 .8, okay, per megawatt hour. And then lambda 2 is 0 0.0096 times 150 plus 6.4. And this is equal to 7.84 okay, pesos okay, per megawatt hour. So we see that okay, the 
incremental cost of uh, the two units are not equal because the economic uh, uh, criterion is not valued no? because of the uh, limitations of the generating units. So each unit therefore has okay different okay uh, incremental cost. Now we have seen that uh, lambda two is less than lambda one. And so this uh, condition is not the most economical uh, sharing of load. Now, if uh, we lower the total load to 200 megawatts, okay, from 250, so it's still, okay, P1 then would be equal to 200 minus 166, 167, okay, divided by 1.833, so this is equal to 31.5 okay, megawatts, okay, which is still below the minimum of 100 megawatts. Okay, so the load of P1 will still be adjusted to 100 megawatts. And uh, P2 will also be, okay, 100 megawatts because, okay, the total load is 200 megawatts. And if uh, the load of P1 should be adjusted to 100 megawatts, so the load of P2, therefore, would be equal to 200 minus 100. So, okay, uh, it will be equal to 100 megawatts. So both will be uh, carrying okay, the same load of 100 megawatts. So in this case, lambda 2 is still equal, is less than lambda 1. So this will uh, remain true until a certain okay, total load will give okay, lambda 1 equal to lambda 2. Now in this range of load, okay, lambda 1 okay, remains a constant while lambda 2 varies. varies. So therefore, the plant lambda Okay, equals lambda 2, okay, for a PT equal to 250 megawatts. So, the uh, plant lambda, meaning uh, the incremental cost of the plant is not, okay, the incremental cost of the unit, okay, that, uh, that uh, the, uh, okay, whose lambda remains a constant because of the restriction of its uh, loading. But, uh, the uh, plant lambda, the incremental cost of the plant is taken as the lambda okay, of the unit which can uh, absorb no, or vary okay, the additional load. So, therefore, our plant lambda 2 will be equal to lambda 2 and that is equal to 7.84 per, uh, per megawatt. Okay, so we go to the next loading for PT equal to 350 megawatts so from equation 8 again okay we have 1.833 P1 plus 166.67 okay we equate this to the total load PT which is equal to 350 so solving uh, for P P1 is equal to 100 megawatts so it uh, complies now with the uh, minimum load of unit 1 100 so this is okay Therefore, no? so no need to adjust the uh, load of P1 because uh, it meets the uh, minimum okay, load of unit 1. So from equation 7, we solve for uh, P2 as uh, 0.833 times 100, the value of P1 okay, plus 166.67. So therefore, okay, our unit 2 should carry okay, 250 okay, megawatts or a total of 350 megawatts. Now notice that P1 meets okay, the minimum. So P1 is equal to 100 megawatts. Okay, it's okay while okay, P2, which is equal to 250 megawatts, is uh, between 100 megawatts minimum and uh, 6 to 5 megawatts maximum. So it's okay. So P2, therefore, will take a value or a load of 250 megawatts. Now, calculating their lambdas, lambda 1 would be equal to, okay, substituting uh, P1 here, which is equal to 100 and computing this, okay, gives us 8.8 .8 megawatt, uh, pesos per megawatt hour, while lambda 2 and substituting uh, P2 here into the equation of the incremental cost of unit 2, so the value is 8.8 .8 per megawatt hour. Now, we see that lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2 in this case equal to 8.8 .8, okay, megawatt hours. Therefore, okay, P1 is equal to 100 megawatts and P2 equal to 250 megawatts are the most economical con condition no? with the plant lambda equal to the lambda of 
both, no, which is 8.8 megawatts. Now, for a load of 450 megawatts, again, now we go back to our equation 8. So, <clears throat> 1.833 P1 plus 166.67 is equal to 450 no, as the total load. So, solving uh, for P1, it is equal to 154.57, okay, which is uh, between its minimum of 100 and maximum of 625. So, therefore, this load of P1 is okay. Now, from equation 7, we solve for P2 with P1 equal to 154.57. So, P2 is 295.43, uh, which is also uh, between its minimum of 100 and uh, maximum of 625. So, in, in between, so therefore, it is uh, okay. No uh, restrictions. So, P1 and P2 are within, okay, the minimum and maximum. So, okay. Uh, calculating the uh, incremental cost, therefore, lambda 1, substituting the value of P1 equal to 154.57 into the incremental cost equation, okay, gives us 9.2365 pesos per megawatt hour. While lambda 2, substituting also the uh, load of unit 2 of 295 into its uh, incremental cost equation, so this gives us 9.2361. One. So, a minor difference, so practically, their uh, incremental costs are equal. So, lambda 1 is equal to lambda 2, and P1 and P2 are, okay, loads of units 1 and 2, okay, for the most economical operation. And the plant lambda is just, okay, the lambda of both. Uh, so, which is, okay, 9.236. Okay, at least uh, correct up to, okay, common to uh, up to three decimal, okay, places. So, this is our, okay, plant lambda. Okay, now we go to the uh, last load. Uh, for a PT equal to 1,250 megawatts. So, again, uh, going back to uh, equation 8. So, uh, our uh, P1, okay will just be equal to the total load okay minus this uh, over 1.33 so solving for a p1 okay this is equal to 591 okay 0.01 megawatts so this is still okay less than 625 now the maximum load of unit one so this is okay for a p1 now we solve okay or a P2 from equation 7 by substituting a P1 equal to 591. So it gives us a okay, 658.98 megawatts. Now we see that this is already over the maximum okay, load of unit 2, which is 625. So it violates. So therefore, okay, our P2 needs okay, adjustment. Okay, so we adjust okay, P2 to its maximum of uh, 6 to 5. So instead of uh, this calculated value of 658, uh, which is beyond its maximum, so we have to reduce this okay, to 6 to 5, the maximum uh, load of unit 2. And so therefore, P1 should also follow, okay, should be adjusted okay, such that okay, the total load, okay, Okay, P1 plus P2 equal to PT. So, with the P2 adjusted to 625 megawatts, our uh, P1, therefore, okay, is to have a value of 1250 minus 625 or equal to 625 megawatts. So, instead of the computed value for economic uh, dispatch of 591.01, Okay, megawatts. So in this uh, upper range of load, again uh, there is a corresponding adjustment. Okay, because okay one of the units has violated its okay restricted uh, load no of uh, maximum okay value. So in this case we have to follow again okay the restriction okay rather than the economic. Uh, 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 sharing no, of the uh, load so therefore our p2 should have a load of uh, 6 to 5 megawatts and p1 should also have a load of okay 6 to 5 megawatts meaning 
Okay, the, uh, the two units should be running at their uh, rated uh, capacities. So, calculating their uh, incremental cost, uh, we see that, okay, for lambda 1, when we substitute, okay, the value of P1, which is 625, it's 13.0, okay, per megawatt hour, while lambda 2 is, okay, uh, substituting uh, the load of uh, 625, okay, so the lambda 2 is, 12 point okay for okay megawatts now since okay lambda 2 is on the restriction uh, condition okay at loads okay uh, beyond okay 1250 or about this value so the plant lambda okay should be the lambda of the unit that uh, can still okay vary no it's uh, incremental cost so the plant lambda here will be equal to okay lambda one okay so as um, already explained okay we have this okay value so uh, if uh, we tabulate okay the results that we have okay at the left we have total plant load in megawatts and then uh, here we have the minimum limit of uh, its unit Okay, 100 megawatts and maximum limit is okay 625 megawatts and then we have unit 1 and unit 2 and then uh, we have the plant lambda in pesos okay per megawatt hour so this is are the uh, results that we have for a total load of 250 okay the sharing would be 100 for unit 1 and uh, for unit 2 okay 150 and the plant lambda is okay 7.84 which is the uh, uh, the incremental cost of unit 2 because okay, unit 1 has been adjusted okay for a load of 350 megawatts okay the shearing still uh, 100 now okay uh, unit 1 has met okay its minimum and then unit 2 carries okay okay the uh, rest which is 250 so the incremental cost is 8.8 .8 okay pesos per megawatt hour okay which is the lambda per booth no? okay now uh, for a total load of 450 megawatts okay the shearing was 154.57 for unit one and 295.43 for unit two and their incremental cost is 0.236 okay so uh, which the plant lambda now which is equal to the lambda of uh, the two units now at the maximum total load of 1250 megawatts okay each unit okay carries okay their maximum of 6 to 5 megawatts for unit one 6 to 5 megawatts for unit two okay with okay plant lambda of uh, 13 okay okay pesos no, per megawatt hour corresponding to unit one which can still uh, absorb okay changes okay in the load while uh, unit 2 has been uh, fixed already okay to its maximum okay value now we have another example here okay determine the saving in uh, fuel cost in pesos per hour okay for the economic distribution of a total load of 450 megawatts in the previous example okay compared with equal distribution of the same total load so we have here to compare now the uh, savings okay uh, with the economic distribution of the total load okay corresponding to the total load of 450 megawatts that uh, we had okay when compared to equal distribution of total load okay so solution okay for the okay from the uh, table that uh, we had seen okay, in the last slide okay for a total load of 450 megawatts okay p1 is 154.7 megawatts and P2 is equal to 295.43 megawatts. Now, for equal distribution, okay, okay, the total load should be divided by the two, so each one should carry 225 megawatts, and uh, yeah, and for unit two, 225 megawatts. So, meaning, okay, uh, from the economic uh, sharing uh, of this, we have P1 equal to 154, okay, and when uh, we force the equal distribution to 225 megawatts each no so uh, therefore uh, there is a need to 
aking increase no unit 1 okay from 154.57 megawatts okay to 225 megawatts while for p2 okay from 295.43 it has to reduce its load okay to 225 megawatts and now uh, we will see the if uh, we have okay savings now okay the increase in fuel cost okay for unit one is okay we integrate the uh, incremental uh, cost equation of a uh, unit one with respect to its output okay the p1 okay from 154.57 for economic of uh, sharing okay to 225 megawatts for equal uh, sharing so when we compute this one when we take the integral of this so we just have here uh, p squared so then uh, for this we have okay p1 and then now uh, we have to uh, we have the upper uh, limits and the lower limits and when we substitute this into this uh, expression then our okay answer is 670.65 okay pesos okay per hour okay so uh, now since uh, we are increasing okay the load of unit one from 154.57 to 225 so this is our additional cost now of operation in operating unit one in pesos per hour okay now the decrease in fuel cost for unit two is on the other hand is okay uh, the uh, incremental cost equation of unit 2 uh, we integrate that with respect to uh, the output of unit 2 okay from 295.43 to 225 megawatts so again now uh, we have okay p2 squared and then now uh, we have uh, p2 here and then uh, we have the limits of integration so when we uh, evaluate okay we have 2000 okay 307 uh, 309. 97 okay pesos per hour now since okay we are decreasing okay the load of unit 2 from okay 295 to 225 so this one is uh, a decrease you no know, in the operating cost okay so uh, we have okay therefore this can be uh, considered as our savings okay less than the uh, increase in cost if uh, we okay change the load of unit one okay from 154 to 225 so therefore our savings okay would be the difference of the two you know? so okay 2309.97 minus 670.65 so we have a savings of 1639 pesos 0.32 pesos okay per hour